Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, May 29th, 2013. Our first story comes from the world of biotechnology. Here on Brainstorm, we've discussed one aspect of synthetic biology in particular, which is the creation of circuits inside living cells. Rather than circuits of transistors and electricity, these circuits are governed by the interaction of genes, their protein products, and often the cellular environment. Generally speaking, the goal is to use genetics to create a digital circuit, but some engineers over at MIT have taken a different approach and created analog circuits within a cell. These circuits operate with a range of potential values. Current and voltage in electronic circuits and various concentrations of molecules in the case of biology. They found it much simpler to engineer analog circuits because it's closer to how many biological reactions are regulated in the first place. This research actually began in the opposite direction, when eight analog electronic transistors were successfully used to model a DNA protein interaction. With this knowledge, they created several circuits that perform mathematical calculations within a cell in response to multiple inputs. Addition and multiplication is achieved when sensors within the cell react to different concentrations of a substance and collectively promote the expression of a green fluorescent protein. In this case, allowing for the direct visual observation of the combined concentrations of a particular sugar and another signaling molecule. Similarly, subtraction and division can be achieved if one compound triggers a gene promoter and another triggers the gene suppressor. They even created an analog square rooting circuit using only two genetic parts, whereas a recent digital circuit required over 100 genetic parts. Still, this is only the beginning for analog genetic circuits, with the goal of making advanced and precise biologically based sensors, both for the environment and enhance control over gene expression in organisms. Next is attempting to build such circuits in non-bacteria cells and modifying other cellular parts to work in a wider range of concentrations. Next is an update from the world of evolution. One of the most important innovations in the history of evolution is the eukaryotic cell. From a bacteria with unsegregated DNA and simple structures to organisms with a nucleus and complex organelles. A particularly important organelle is the chloroplast, which allowed for the rise of eukaryotic algae, multicellular plant life, and eventually more complex animals due to the increased oxygen in the environment. The leading hypothesis for the evolution of the chloroplast is called endosymbiosis, which suggests that an early eukaryotic organism simply absorbed a photosynthesizing cyanobacteria, and instead of digesting it, kept it around for the sugar it was producing. Even though this was the most likely idea, it had never been proven, and that's kind of an important thing in science. Now researchers working with the American University of Natural History have directly observed a modern eukaryotic algae absorbing and eating a bacteria. Using transmission electron microscopy, they observed the algae sucking in a bacteria through a mouth-like opening into a tubular section of the cellular membrane. It then transported the bacteria to an acidic vacuole where it was digested. While this isn't direct evidence of endosymbiosis, it does demonstrate for the first time that eukaryotic algae have the ability to absorb bacteria, which was a crucial step in the evolutionary hypothesis. Although it's not necessarily the most exciting news, it is important. The development of complex photosynthetic organisms paved the way for the animals and other organisms, including us. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you had to pick just one, which mystery and evolution would you like solved the most? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.